Well, let's talk law enforcement. Maryland becomes the first state to repeal the law enforcement officer's Bill of Rights as part of lawmakers' sweeping police reform package. They overrode Governor Hogan's veto to do it. And it comes as Baltimore's mayor forms a task force to reduce the city's police budget. Governor Hogan calls the move reckless and, quote, the worst possible thing we could do to stop violent crime. Here to react, Sheriff Mike Lewis uh, of Y. Comico County. Uh, and Maryland Chief John Nesky of Bowie, uh, Maryland Police Department. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Sheriff Lewis, to you. Uh, this means what to you? This is absolutely devastating to all Maryland law enforcement, Brian. In the 37 years I've been in law enforcement, we've never had anything impact law enforcement the way this is going to impact law enforcement. Uh, policing, as we've known it in Maryland, is done. It's completely over. We don't know what's going to happen. They've passed these laws without having any knowledge whatsoever as to what they're doing. They have no clue. This is not law enforcement reform. It's law enforcement revenge. For the many, many years that we have attempted to hold criminals accountable in the state of Maryland, right. this is what they're doing to us. In Baltimore City, as you well know, the homicide rate has skyrocketed, 40% increase in homicides this year alone over last year. And those who are pushing these bills and have been pushing these bills for the last 10 months are primarily from the Baltimore metropolitan area. Right. So that was, uh, you have 85 homicides already this year and 138 shootings go to the Baltimore Sun. That's horrendous. Uh, let's talk, Chief. Uh, let's just go over this for everyone at home to talk about what happened in Maryland. They have repealed officers' bill of rights in this way. Some of the highlights. Implement statewide use of force standard. All right. Creates new disciplinary process. Limits use of no-knock warrants to just daytime. When it comes to the, uh, how you're now liable, Instead of up to 400000 up to $900,000 an officer is liable for in case they are ruled against in terms of using excessive force. How does this relate to the man or woman on the street? It, it relates very poorly. And, and I will say that what we try to do is marry the principle. When we talk to the, uh, the legislators, we try to marry the principle of what they're trying to do with the operational aspects. Unfortunately, what came out in these bills puts the officers uh, during their daily duties in a very precarious position. Especially use of force, they're trying to apply a linear matrix into a very chaotic uh, situation that does not conform to linear uh, metrics. Things change on a dime and, and we're trying to dictate a step-by-step -step process and it does put our officers in a very challenging and difficult position. And Sheriff, I imagine if I'm out there, especially I put in 10 years already, I'm looking to maybe finish out my term, get my pension, I'm not going to put myself on the line. You already showed massive disrespect for the job I do on a daily basis. I'm trying to protect the most vulnerable, and now you're trying to sue me, right? Absolutely, Brian. That's what we're seeing already. I'm seeing a number of retirements and resignations in my agency alone. And I've, been, I've taken a lot of pride in, in being up to full standard with our manpower and our strength here in Wicomico County. But right now we have people that are retiring. They've announced their intentions to retire, and they're leaving in droves across our state right now. The only thing I could hope for, Chief, is uh, as we put up a full screen now of all the budget cuts been happening in some major cities, Austin leads it all, 33% cut. Then you got New York, 14.8, Minneapolis, 14.8, Seattle, 11.2, and Denver, 9.8. These liberal mayors realize, what did I do? Even, especially even in Minneapolis, where maybe a third of the force has left the job, you cut the budget, and now the most vulnerable are, the, are the, the becoming victims at a dizzying rate. They're looking to reverse that. Do you think they're going to sober up at some point? I would hope that a, a calmer, more rational approach is, is done. You have to be very careful when you oversimplify words like defund or you just take a, a, a general approach to these things. You have to look at where those funds are going, what it supports, what is your manpower, what is your coverage on the street, and what are you actually doing with those funds? We all agree that mental health and drug awareness and, and drug prevention, counseling, and, and things that keep people out of the criminal justice system that don't necessarily need to be there need to be funded, but that can't always be at the, at the police department's expense. Right, no, too. Uh, the chief prosecutor says they're no longer going to look to in Maryland to prosecute uh, trespassing on misdemeanors and the war on drugs is over. Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, best of luck with that. Uh, I know there were two controversial police incidents that happened over the weekend, but that has nothing to do with this. Uh, I wish people would understand uh, that the problem is not law enforcement. Thanks so much, uh, Chief and Sheriff. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank, Thank you, Brian. You.